the Russian advances continue. And the West versus East problem breaks out again. But unfortunately, Russia is like the only Eastern country basically now. And they are Western. So explain that. Yep, exactly. And hi guys, welcome to today's alternate Future of the World series, and in today's video, we will continue where we left off and look at events spark up. But, it's starting to look bad for the blue team, as Russia manages to wipe out Georgia. But unfortunately, somebody's seen enough with this war, right? So that, this is Russia. That's Russia, and that's Russia. Just to let you know. It broke apart. That's also Russia. Oh, so just to keep you guys in mind. Crimea, Luhansk, and Donetsk are all going independent, by the way. The bombing of Ukrainian territory continuing again. Well, I mean, this is a repeating topic. Countries like Russia get strong and then collapse. Was well, it looking bad for Lithuania and Estonia? Now this is where a sore thumb in Russia's back happens when Turkey does this. Which leads to other countries, including Greece, getting involved. And yeah. But while ever I distracted, Serbia starts doing something. They continue their reformation of a Serbian Yugoslav Empire, kind of. As they join the war on the side of Russia. But really, they were in their own war. Well, Turkey was ready for the invasion of Greece. So it basically countered it as they did this. And then they move into Armenia because our forces were ready here. But unfortunately, they forgot about Kurdistan. As Kurdistan starts an advance in. Or the world starts seeing differently, the world order. And while it looks like Russia is going to have a semi success in this war, maybe. But it depends on how far Poland is willing to go. Because Poland, as we know, is starting to become a crazy country. With Greece gathering forces and launching an invasion here, eventually the full southern coast of Turkey is taken. But the Turkish people refuse to give up because they think they can win this war. As they move into Georgia, trying to establish Georgia as a part of it. And yeah. They move into Azerbaijan. But Poland's starting their first counter-offensive. Well, they're looking like this might be soon the end. As Russia's kicked back in the north. This is what Russia's front line looks like. As in Moldova... In order to secure itself, Ukraine starts an invasion. And while this is where Poland changes its strategy and starts an invasion. And while they even move into Lithuania. Which, this is where the turning point kind of starts. I thought Russia would have had... A cakewalk, but it turns out no. But with Russian defenses really strong in the Baltics, and them refusing to step back, leads to them losing a small amount of territory, especially in the Belarusian area. But it looks like this might be the last time Russia attempts war. With Poland and Ukraine advancing steadily. 
with the Turkish invasion of Kurdistan and Armenia speeding up, with, Ar with the Armenian lands of Russia falling. This is where phase two starts to begin, which is the re-liberation of Azerbaijan. As they take the capital, they quickly reestablish government in this place, with them also going on the counter-offensive in the south. Why is this a big deal? Because it's a success. With Russia trying to establish a state of peace. But it failing miserably as they're pushed back to Crimea. Who they want to re-annex. Well, this happening. With Russia taking actions quick in their own hands. As they call for peace. But one person stands in the way. Ukraine tries to stop them, but it appears that the will of the people in what they want to re take back is different than what they thought. Because remember, in the series, I haven't really talked about it, but throughout the Russian occupation, Russia has been steadily moving their people, Russians, into these lands. But with Russia managing to use the people they settled in these lands to take back some land. But this, thus, is a failure. As Russia is trying to get to the peace negotiations. Oh, okay. The ending. Moldova has now gave a vote to, for independence, which they vote in favor of. Well, the new Europe. Is a bit different. But Russia is still in this war. Why is it still in this war? Because it's... Until it recognizes Azerbaijan's and Georgia's independence. Which... This also leads to the Treaty of... Of Belgrade, which unnecessarily. It's not necessary to continue this war in reality, but what do they say about this? They say no. And this is why the front line starts collapsing. With Kurdistan feeling the brunt of Turkish forces as they do this, cutting a big chunk of Kurdistan off, taking their access to the water. And while they push quickly into these Kurdish lands on two fronts. Yeah, I can't believe that we're at part 37 of this series. But also, guys, I'd like to remind you guys I'm not going to be recording more, mostly because my schedule is busy. Giving me a lot less time. If it wasn't for that, I would be recording tomorrow. But, you know. And maybe, and I'm going to stop Tuesdays and Thursdays because, A, I record late on those days. B, it's not easy with my schedule on those days to record. So, yeah. With Turkey's offensive going really well. Oh my god, Kurdistan fell while I was ranting on something else. I guess some things never change. And while Turkey continues its invasion, but some questionable decisions are made, which a lot of people question. With Turkey so starting an offensive in the north, Greek forces break down in the Anatolian Peninsula. That spot as they are forced to withdraw from Anatolia, quickly pushed out of Corfu and quickly pushed off this. With Cyprus being next to fall, and then Greece is in trouble. And while Albania says, hey Turkey, can we have some land we need to make up for what we lost to Serbia? They basically say. With this helping Turkey, because it distracts the Greeks, and they manage to pull off a landing. Oh my god, how many times am I going to butcher Greece in this series? Well... I didn't butcher them last time. And while well, they sign peace at the end of this treaty, which is very erratically unfair. Because of a, a GNC. 
Albania takes a big chunk out of northern Greece. Armenia is beat up badly and stuff. That should not happen. Now the Arab Union starting to have troubles. Why? Because Iran has been slowly building up its military. Yeah, Iran has been slowly building up its military. And I have my microphone far away just in case you couldn't hear me because that's not good, is it? Sarah, it's a YouTube channel. You need voice. Well, you don't need it depending on the content. And well, this is where the an Arabian war breaks out. And you won't believe what happens next, guys. The Arab Union wants to expand into North Africa. Slowly gaining influence, but a gang slap starts to break out, it looks. With Egypt, with looking like North Africa is moving towards unification, Egypt still doesn't join this war, but it's seen at how quick the geopolitical situation can change, basically. As Iran pushes into this region, what's it called again? It's former right. It was the land Saddam Hussein wanted. As, as they enter into the Kuwaiti state and Iraqi states, respectively. With Turkey entering the Syrian state and Israel entering Lebanese and Jordanian and Saudi states. Saudi constituent countries. Well, this war is bad with three fronts. These two fronts meet up. And then eventually Iran Iranian forces meet up. And due to this being Iran's war and Iran being the strong power, when peace comes, Iran is at the forefront of peace, which peace comes now. Saudi Arabia weakened on the world stage, but still ambitious. Syria, some of Lebanon, and some of Syria from the Arabian Union, some of Kuwait and Iraq is gave to Iran, with Israel gaining some from the Lebanese, Jordanian, the Palestinian, and the Saudi lands. But this is not the same Israel we know. It's an Israel that is not really Israel such as much as it is today. It's more so like the Levant, let's call it. With Iran strong, but Saudi Arabia still really ambitious and quickly after this to show the world stage that they deserve respect, they and the East African Federation both go to war on this piece of land known respectively as Eritrea. And yeah, with the Arabian Union storming in before even East Africa moves in, and while it falls within days. And yeah, they cross into Sudan because they want to have fun. And then they have a very, un they have a very famous Eritrea annexed directly into the Arabian Union. But the world having many turns of events with the East African Federation chilling for a bit. The world was so close to full unification and then this happened. With Brazil is still there. Surprise, surprise. But as the world seems less threatening, some countries decide they don't need the World Treaty Organization, including Mexico. A lot of countries left after that big war in Eastern Europe, including Germany. And well, countries like Spain leave, infuriated by that little, but not really. Romania and Bulgaria stay, Finland, these guys stay. Why? Because they have a threat. Japan, because they think China will invade. But that's far from the truth until something does happen to sway people to think that. As China has a vote, and that vote says that they need 
that the people want to invade India. With the country of Pakistan saying that they will support China. Especially in the one region where there was a border clash in 20... In 2195, as some border clashes broke out, and then it led to a war. Why border clashes break out? Because they just did. And unfortunately, India just got out of its collapse, so it's not really strong. But it has good allies. What do I mean by good allies? Well, you have Afghanistan. And then Russia directly to the north. Which probably won't support you. And, well, they keep their invasion, Pakistan, into Afghanistan. But there was a big shock. Nobody expected Afghanistan to be able to cross the border and start an armed invasion. And the armed invasion goes really well. With Pakistan south being split in two. But unfortunately, China's nearing the capital of India. With, with India being in trouble. Not because they're losing this war. Well, Pakistan and China now started an attack towards New Delhi, which they encircle New Delhi, and a bloody battle breaks out. Eventually, they're overrun in New Delhi. Though they probably are the most populous country in the world at this point, they're having trouble keeping together, keeping unity. But... The good news is, they continue their advance here. With this being like the end of the friendly war. With both sides being split apart. With, with India retreating to here. But nobody expected this. The Indian army would actually do this and make an encirclement of Delhi. And they move in quickly, taking back New Delhi. With Afghanistan on its last peg, trying something which fails, they're now looking like they're getting a pro-China government, which is not good. So their democracy was killed by a democracy, but... Are they still a democracy? Well, I guess... But, as we know, Afghanistan is unconquerable. And as they move back up, evicting this new government, who's trying to rule the whole country. With them finally agreeing to leave, and then the peace treaty is now drafted up. And Are soon going to see they will unite their people, because Pakistan is becoming unstable again. Well, Iran, Afghanistan, and India have signed a pact, but a secret pact. And nobody expects what will happen next. Which they try to clamp down violently on. And let me point out these protests. One's here, another is there, and there, and there. As they started clamping down, led to violence. Which, quickly after the violence began, these militias that rose up due to the violent crackdown on the pol by police have led to an uprising. Known as a Pakistan Revolution. Well, the Balochi Revolution. Countries are hungry for more territory. 
include Afghanistan, India, and Pakistan. Who create a rebel group? No, they don't, but they join on their own team. Well, they basically call this a war for their best interests. Saying national security has one of their main reasons for this joint invasion by three people. And they say terrorism. But really? With, Pakistan, with Afghanistan not really focused on the North, because I know India wants that. And yeah, India storms in to the North. With Iran's movement much slower, and India starts movement in the south. With the Pakistan Balauchi Guard looking to be about to win. And well, with the capturing of Karachi. And then the Indian capturing of Islamabad, which is taken, and then Iran seizing these lands is where they meet for peace. Now being called Balochistan, and Pakistan leaving this war. With Afghanistan leaving a bigger, India also leaves bigger, Iran leaves bigger, and well, the world's attention has shifted. Because they don't view Russia as a big threat no more. And China thinks they could easily take them out in a one by be one conflict. And that's all for the action in this video. So now let's go to the end. So this is where I'm going to tell you, me to subscribe. Because, well, our new goal, we're 63 subscribers away. So if you want to help me get to two... 100 subscribers by March 1st. It's your time to subscribe. And do I hear the year end goal? No, yes, that doesn't exist yet. Well, it does exist. It's a thousand, but it might change. We never know where it will be. And really, my channel has been growing faster. So if you could please like and subscribe, that would mean a lot. And. Leave a comment to tell me if you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Yes, liking and subscribing is cool. And, well, I have one more thing to tell you. So there's going to be no video tomorrow. Or on, or on any Thursday coming forward. Or on Tuesdays because of my schedule. So please watch the videos that are already posted on Thursdays and Tuesdays. Thank you, please. And that's all for today's video. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. That's all for today's video. Wild Mapper out!